Before we start, let's go into state uh, explicitly which are the main assumptions we are going to make today. We're going to make uh, uh, three assumptions. The first one is that uh, um, differently from how we saw in the previous slide, in the previous lesson when uh, we accounted explicitly for uh, production functions, today we will consider the extraction of the natural resource itself to generate uh, a utility. That is, if uh, uh, la in the last slide we had the resource extractions as a production uh, uh, factor, and when we produce, we have some good that we can consume, and then this good generate some utility. Today, we sort of bypass this, and we state that it is the, research, the resource extraction itself that uh, generate uh, the utility. Somehow we are assuming that everything we are uh, extracting, it is immediately consumed, and so there is no, no stock left uh, uh, behind. The second assumption that we are going to make today is that we know uh, for each kind of uh, no renewable resources how much of the resource it exists. And this is, uh, uh, this is no, and uh, it is uh, a stock that is, uh, uh, is fixed uh, aside uh, what is uh, consumed. And uh, it, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, change with uh, uh, new, uh, new discoveries. Well, we will see uh, the effect of uh, uh, discovering new resources of uh, non-renewable resources at the end of, uh, of the lesson. The third important assumption we are going to make today is that we do not consider externalities that arise from uh, uh, the extractions or the consumptions of, of the resource. So we will not deal with this, and this is what will uh, allow us to, uh, to state at a certain point during the lessons that uh, benevolent dictatorship will have the same effect than markets, uh, than free markets. And we will see that this will no longer be the case when instead we will deal with, uh, with uh, externalities in the form of pollutions generated by extractions or usage of uh, natural resources. And we will deal this specifically in the next lesson. Across this unit, we will deal a lot about the stock of uh, the non-renewable resource. But what we mean as uh, exactly a stock? Well, there are many ways to think about a stock of a natural resource. It can be either considered the whole physical stock on Earth, and in that case, often we have very, very high uh, amounts, but of course, not all uh, uh, that is present will ever be possible to uh, to extract so uh, another measure of stock could be what is technologically feasible to uh, to to use and uh, even in this case uh, you may have some resource that it is technically uh, feasible to extract but that would employ would would require an effort that uh, um, implicitly uh, consider a very, very high uh, uh, cost that would never be, uh, be possible. So uh, together with uh, an idea of technically feasible, you, have a, you may have also an idea of stock of what is economically feasible, either under uh, uh, f uh, an estimation of uh, future price or cost or uh, uh, under uh, the current ones. And uh, we can see that there are some, uh, uh, some resources, I take here the example of aluminum or s and silver, where the current production level is uh, approaching very quickly the amount of uh, uh, what is economically feasible to, to extract. Yet the amount of the resource that is on earth is much, much higher.